Hi, I'm Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H. from ColorJoy.com, and I'm here for the fourth session of a knit along for my crystal socklet from Knitty.com in March 2012. This is the part that we start will be the what they call the foot section in the knitty pattern. And what I have done so far is the first record was, uh, or the first recording was how to do the square, which is a Bosnian toe. The second section was picking up the stitches around those, that first square so that we could go in the round. And then we have done increases on the third. And now this is the fourth. We're going to go into the stranded color work section. And it's a very simple color work section as they go. Uh, so if you've never done any color work, this is going to be an easier one for you to try. Now we've got three colors of yarn here and I'm working with my green right now. I'm going to use this uh, light aqua as my zigzag section and then I'm going to do my foot in this darker teal. So I've got a chart here in different colors than are shown at Nitty. And I want you to notice that the row one is at the bottom here and the column one is on the right hand side. So it's opposite from how we work in English reading. We are going bottom up and right to left. We build fabric from, it basically falls into our lap as we continue to process our, our, our stitches. And so this part will be at the bottom by the time we make the next row and the next row. So we also make stitches from the left hand side going to the right hand side and we're always proceeding counterclockwise or to the left. So this chart is showing you the way we are going to do our, our work. Now I'm starting, um, I do want to work with a larger size needle when I'm doing stranded color work. Color work tends to be a lot less stretchy. And so if you go to a larger needle size, that will work for you. Now I'm just going to, to start my color work with a new larger size needle in my right hand. And that will just transfer those that first round onto the larger needle without me actually having to slip any stitches anywhere. So the other thing that a lot of people are worried about is, well, how do I hold my yarn? And the answer is really, it, it's very personal. Everybody has a different way of doing it. If you are used to using your right hand for holding your yarn, then you can just drop the yarn and pick up the new yarn at any time uh, for whatever color you need. So you're going to first do two uh, green stitches and then you'll have to do two aqua stitches and you, at this point where you switch you're just going to let go of this one and pick up the other one. Another way that's used a lot is to hold one yarn in one hand and one yarn in another hand and uh, if you're comfortable with that then you can have for example one one yarn on this hand and one in the other. Now I want to do two yellow greens. I want to call it yellow even though it's really green. And then I want to do two aquas. And I'm going to keep this really loose. I have a tendency to knit pretty firmly, but when I'm doing color work I have to really counteract that, in t that tens tendency S because when we do this, I'll show you some other ways of dealing with the yarn in a minute here. When we do two different colors of yarn, the color that we're making a stitch with goes up and around the needle and then back down again, what Lucy, call, Lucy Neatby calls a happy stitch. And it goes up and, and down and it's open at the bottom. But the problem is when we're not using that color, it's making a strand across the back. So if we look back here now, what we've got is uh, be below the aqua stitches, we have a, a horizontal strand of yarn that's not being used of the yellow green. And when we've got the green, then we've got a strand of unused yarn 
which is the aqua. This part does not stretch as much as when it goes up and around and up and around. And so this limits the stretchiness of your fabric. You really want it to be able to stretch. And can you see how it, it's sort of fighting me a little bit? Now this will still fit the, the foot I want it to, to fit, but I wanted you to see why it's so important for us to do that. Now for the record, I am working in a larger yarn than the pattern spe specifies. And that means I have a different number of stitches. I'm also working on a smaller number of stitches because I'm making a smaller sock. I compared the width of this, this knitting to the sock that I have here so that I know that it will be, a, it will fit approximately a person who would fit this sock. So I'm working a smaller sock with fatter yarn just so that I can get through this for your benefit. Now we have a sub, we have a, what's called a repeat of four stitches. So you can see I have four and then it goes to eight, but that is a repeat right here. Most socks are at least on the foot done in a multiple of four stitches. That's not always true when you have fancy work on the top of the sock, but this is a real standard uh, stockinette. So we are working with stitches in multiples of four. Well, I don't have multiples of four on my needles. So at this point, we're going to adjust our, num our number of stitches around so that we can make a multiple of four on each needle. So here's four and here's four. Now I've just got two. I'm going to do two more with my uh, green. I think I just switched my colors. And then I'm going to want two more of those so that I'll have a multiple of four here. And so I'm going to put down this older stitch that or needle that was a larger or smaller so that I can work with the larger needle. And then I'm going to Let's see, I'll, I'll switch to right hand, right hand here and do two more of the aqua yarn. If you're used to holding your yarn um, and not letting go of it, you can figure out different ways of holding this so you can kind of switch back and forth. I have a tendency, I really like working with just my left hand now, but the secret with that is if you take your yarn through the same path of your fingers, it will tangle. So I, I have a tendency to go over one finger, under, over, under. That's how I hold my yarn. But if I do both of them the same way and I'm not feeding them at the same rate, they kind of tangle. So what I've learned, and I learned this from Beth Brown Reinsel, who's just a wonderful teacher, just as Lucy Neatby is. Um, I do the first one over, under, over, under. And then I do the second one over two and under, over. And that is what works for me. You will have to find your own way. But if you want to do that, then you can start picking from, again, I'm starting a new needle now that I have finished a, a repeat of four, a multiple of four. So I'm going to go to this next needle now. And at this case, and I'm going to try to turn this so that the camera can see it better. Can you see that I have the stitch I'm going to work in and my two different colors of yarn here. I'm going to go under this and I'm going to pick the yellow, which are the yellow green, which is the farthest one and bring it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing for that and bring it up. And then I'm going to do the aqua for two. Again, after you've done a few stitches, it's really good to think about stretching these out so that the back strands are nice and loose because it matters a lot when you get it on that foot. It may look fine on the needle, So I have a multiple of four and a multiple of four, so that's good. Then I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. It doesn't matter how you do this. It matters not at all. And I teach children to knit and some of them like to actually go up and then they hold it with this hand and they wrap with their left hand, but they're actually doing a pick up and wrap. Any of these things are acceptable. It makes a stitch and you end up with a sock. Therefore, it is just fine however you do it. The whole point of knitting is to be happy about it, right? We're not trying to do this to impress anybody. We're just having a nice time touching the wool and looking at the colors and enjoying thinking about the sock that we're making. If we're lucky, we're chatting with some friends while we do it. 
So you see I can do any number of different methods. I can have one yarn in either hand, I can have both on my right or both on my left, and that should work out just fine. So I'm working now on finishing up this, uh, this first round, and the first round is a little bit more tricky. Make sure when you, when you cross your, your, from one needle to another, that you continue that repeat of four. It's easy to do these in aqua and then do two more in aqua and end up with a little bit of a, a hiccup that will have to come out. It's good for you uh, to remember which one is in which hand so that it doesn't switch in the middle because one does show more. And I just did what I told you not to do. I just did two more yellows. Let's see, two, four, Okay, there's a multiple of four, there's a multiple of four, and there's my mistake. I need another multiple of four, or I need it to be a multiple however I do it. So I'll just add two more to the end. And so these are now not symmetrical as they were before. In fact, I could take this marker right out, although you may have a needle break at that point. I have done one round of all these colors. This is the beginning of my round. It's the bottom of the foot, okay? And at this point, I have finished row one. I have repeated it as many times as I needed to to get back to my beginning of round. Now, at one point, we had a little tiny square and I marked the beginning of round, but it's moved quite a bit. So if I still need a reminder of where the beginning of round is, I'm going to move it back up here a little bit. Or you might just be able to, by looking at how things are on your needles, you might say, well, this is in between the two small needles, and so I don't really need this anymore. I know that this is my beginning of round. But when you're a, a newcomer to, to sock knitting, it might be really helpful for you to go ahead and leave that, but just move it up so you can see where you are a little better. Okay, and I think I've been keeping, if I was knitting all by my lonesome self, I'd remember more what color was where. But here we go. So we're going to the second round starts with one aqua and then two yellow greens and then another aqua. That's a multiple of four. And you notice we have the same thing again. So it is two, 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 but it's jogged over one. So first I'm going to knit with my aqua. Just like that. And then I'm going to two, do two greens. And can you see that they are sitting on top of the colors that were at the bottom there on the, on the row one? round one, excuse me. And we're just gonna keep going on this. Every time I hit, to the, hit the beginning of round, I'm going to switch to the next row on the chart. And I'm just gonna keep on doing that. When I get to this point, I won't need this uh, toe color anymore. I'm gonna cut that yarn about four inches or so and tuck it in, that, in the toe of the sock so it's out of my way. That lets me work in the ends a little bit better later and I will have a little section on how to work in ends when we're done with this whole thing. So this video is just here to show you how to keep on going and to use a chart if you haven't before uh, to think about that strand on the back which really needs to be, let's see, where's a good place to show that? There they are. Nice strands and if you do it loose enough it still stretches. The colors just keep you going. It's just really exciting to see those colors build up. Can you see that we're we're already starting our zigzag right here? We've got two stitches here and then two more. We're, we're starting to work our way up. So this will be really fun. When we're done with this we're just going to hold another one. Did you notice I just held my yarn there as if it was connected and started knitting with it. There's no tying knots in a sock. You don't want that discomfort. You can see that that very first stitch is a little bit loose here on the front side of this. Can you see that? And so, but that's just this thing right here. I left a tail that wasn't quite long enough to really sew with. I'll deal with that. But you can tug it a little bit before you work your ends in and then it won't show at all. And here we are. We're just starting our little chart. Can you see where we are? Yeah. So, welcome to the crystal sock. I'll have another video for you. This is video number four on the, the knit along. My name again is Lynn H or Lynn Hirschberger from colorjoy.com. Thanks for coming out. Bye-bye.